Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be rebuilding the forging press. Let me take you out to it and show you what we need to do. Well this forging press has been a very nice addition to the shop. These uprights here, they flex too much if the work isn't perfectly centered. These welds are terrible, it's not attached very rigidly, and there's too much flex between the guides and the ram. The ram itself will actually bend. That's very, very bad, and you do not want that to happen for your forging press. Another issue is this platen down here is way too tall and it's uneven. I need to do a bunch of work to it. I need to sink it down a few inches, uh, cut out a section here and bring it down. That way I have more room between the ram, the top of the ram, and the dies, or I guess more room between the dies themselves. I'm going to bring you inside and show you what all I've done and what I'm going to do to replace all this. So this is all the steel that I cut up from that angle iron and some forklift time. These will be replacing the guides, sort of the guide bodies. These here are going to go in there. You guys will see how I assemble it. These will replace those two chunks of angle iron that ran on either side of the guides. And this is going to replace that three quarter inch plate where the ram mounts. This construction, it's going to be bolted together as opposed to um, being welded together. That way I can take it apart more easily. At the moment, to get that sliding element off, I'm going to have to grind it off. And I don't want to have to do that next time around. So not only am I going to brace it much more, you guys will see uh, what my plans are. Uh, the material will be thicker and it'll just be a much better, more solid design. Uh, so let's get to tacking some parts together and I'll bring you back. All right, now I'm ready to start drilling into the top part of the sliding element, uh, sort of the main body. What I did was tack these two chunks of angle iron to the large block of steel so that I could drill all the way through and not have to transfer the hole locations or worry about misalignments. This way I drill through both the angle iron and the steel block in the same spot it's guaranteed to line up and be the exact same. Now I don't think I'm going to be able to get all the way through. There's five holes in each of them. There's four that will mount the nut in the middle here and then there's three um, on the edges here. And I don't think I'm going to be able to go through all the way uh, through the angle iron and through the steel block on these three holes on the outside because of the angle iron, I think it's going to interfere. So what I'm going to do is go as far as I can, uh, drill out the middle ones all the way of course, uh, go as far as I can with these outside three on either side, and then I'll grind off the welds, come back and drill all the way through on those outside holes. So let's get to uh, machining.
Well, that happened. That's not what that drill was supposed to look like. But I do have this presumably carbide drill. I think it's carbide because it's a hell of a lot heavier than a high speed steel drill. But the edge is real chewed up. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to try this drill, see what happens. I can't fuck it up any more than it's already fucked up. So, probably bump the speed up a bit, and drill it by hand, see if I can't just pulverize that thing out of there. Next best step would be a masonry drill. But I really don't have a good way to sharpen carbide at the moment. Otherwise, I'd sharpen this guy. So, I'll work at this off camera and see what I can do. Fuck! Well, I figured it out. So, when I drilled through, I was just barely breaking through the bottom whenever that drill snapped. So I was able to go through the other side and punch it out. Now what I've done is grind off the welds and knock these loose. Went through and opened those up to half inch. Now I gotta tap those. Well, I don't know if I'll tap those first or drill those first. But you guys won't know the difference because I'm not gonna show the tapping because that's boring. I'll show the drilling though because that's easy to film. So, about a week has passed since I put this new sliding element on the press. A couple of things happened. There's a fitting up here that interfered with this here hit this fitting and broke it off. Spilled hydraulic oil absolutely everywhere as you can see. But I put a spacer in there and that raised the ram. or I guess brought the sliding element down a little bit and that fixed the issue so this is what it looks like so far 
I do still need to adjust it, but it is working very, very well. I still need to forge something with it, see how much it rocks, see even if it rocks. I think I'm going to be putting some uh, supports, I guess, between these two points, sort of a bar right here, to keep these from twi uh, bending inwards. But other than that, this project is mostly done. This sliding on it. I do still need to rebuild sort of the bottom platen. It's probably 10 to 12 inches thick and frankly that's just too high considering I don't have a huge amount of room between the platen or between the sliding element and the platen between the dies. So I'm going to be pulling this off in the next video but for now I'm going to test this out throw a big chunk of steel in the forge and size up some stock for an upcoming job. So I got that bar of steel broken down a little bit. It, the sliding element itself worked amazingly well. I'm really happy with it. It does need a couple of tweaks, a little bit of adjustment, but that's normal, that's fine. I kind of stopped because another issue started to crop up. 
And that issue was with the actual platen, the bottom part, the bottom die essentially. The whole thing was moving around. That lathe carriage that I have bolted on there started to move around on me. Something I hadn't really experienced before, but I guess with the uh, top die, the top, the sliding element being so reinforced now, that's something else just kind of had to give. So that's going to be my next video. Um, one thing I want to talk about is designing your forging press. If you decide to build a press, especially a forging press, spend a lot of time really thinking about how you're going to use it. Um, or no. So thank you for watching this very simple episode or very simple video. Uh, just a bit of drilling. Um, I did kind of take a week break after filming most of it because a hydraulic part broke that I couldn't get for a little bit. And I just had a bunch of other projects that I had to work on and had to get done. A couple of uh, machining jobs that I had to rush out the door. But the next video is going to be uh, making the new bottom die holder or sort of bottom platen. Uh, I'm going to make it out of the same angle iron I made the rest of it out of. Uh, now that I have a couple of stick welders, I have a new 600 amp a giant stick welder with 50 to 60 foot leads that can reach all the way out to the press. Probably going to be using that guy and it'll be fun. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Check out my other videos and have a good day.